Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, uh, today's video will be a continuation of the blade sharpening video. Now, if you didn't go and watch this video right here, I suggest you do so because some of the information that we'll be talking about in this video will kind of reference back to that somewhat. But uh, for those of you have already that have already watched that video, well, we are talking about lapidary saw blades, we're going to be talking about dressing them and the things that people say works. And, uh, well, we're going to be testing it. Let's head on over to the bench and we'll kind of look at some of the anatomy of these blades. Here is a centered lapidary saw blade. Uh, and this blade in particular, uh, I have kind of been, well, abusing. Maybe not abusing, but I haven't been treating it good on purpose to get to the point with the blade where it doesn't want to cut as well as it did when it was first brand new. Now, in a previous video that I already mentioned, we talked about the peening method of sharpening your blades, where you take a mill bastard file and essentially go through and ding, 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 peen up the metal, and then when you cut, that metal will get thrown off of the blade as you cut, and uh, expose fresh diamonds so that you can continue cutting. Well, a large number of people said that, well, I'm a complete idiot and uh, that it doesn't work and that's stupid and why would you do that? And you're destroying your blades and all you gotta do is cut a brick, right? All you have to do is cut a red mason's brick and it will restore your blade and refresh it. Now, a couple other people that were significantly nicer um, said that you can just cut a piece of obsidian and it will restore your blade. Now, I have my own theories, um, and I kind of have an idea as to where some of these things may have originated from. My theory is that that's not going to actually do anything, um, and that when people do it and their blade then cuts better, it's not actually getting the blade kind of even remotely close to what it was. It's kind of a combination of things. It's both in their head and then let's say you have a blade and 100% sharpness is when it was brand new. And you take that thing down to 40% sharpness and you cut a brick and it brought it back up to 60% sharpness. Well, from the end user perspective, it's sharp again, but it's not actually what it initially was. But we're going to test these things. Um, definitely the brick, we might be able to do the obsidian. We'll see and we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, I'll, people talk a lot about glazing, a blade glazing over. Now, if you're doing lapidary work, uh, I don't think that actually happens. What they're referring to is what tile cutters experience. Now, um, if we look at a tile here, uh, yeah, you kind of see that chipped up edge, right? Uh, a tile is essentially a soft clay, and then we have a hard ceramic. And what will happen is if you're pushing really hard, doing stupid things, cutting, you will get this kind of really jagged, chipped up edge. And that one's not actually that bad. Like you can get some nice like little chunks out of your tiles and part of what's happening is you are kind of packing the pores of your blade with this ultra soft clay, therefore glazing it. Um, and you're kind of burying the diamonds a little bit, uh, which could be a problem for sure if you were cutting a significant amount of tile with your blade. So. Um, from a lapidary perspective, I don't think that many people cut stuff that is very soft, like a tile. Um, instead, people are cutting a lot of agates, jasper, quartz, uh, petrified wood, you know, interesting slabs for doing uh, lapidary work, things of that nature, um, possibly even some obsidian. But we have two things here that are soft in nature, relatively soft as far as uh, Moe's hardness scale goes. And I think the theory is that in cutting uh, some of this material with your lapidary blade, 
it will shear off and throw away and open up, get rid of some of that metal and expose more diamonds. Now, I don't necessarily see how that's possible. Um, I could see if you're cutting lots of tile and you had that kind of glazed look or a bunch of rust built up on your blade from not taking care of it. And you can even see we do have a little, some little rust spots there um, that it could maybe clear that out. But it's that's just my theory. Now, what we're going to do now is uh, go over to the microscope and look at this blade in its current state. And uh, you can see I have a white mark here. I have specifically marked this blade with a paint pen so that I can look at the side and the edge on under the microscope. We'll come back, cut a brick take it back up to the microscope and see what we can see. So here we are at the microscope and I can kind of explain to you a little bit about what you're looking at here if you didn't watch the previous video. Down here at the bottom of your screen you'll see a little white mark that is that paint pen marking so that we can uh, make sure to be looking at the same spot every time here. Uh, you're, you can see clearly the embedded diamonds and you can see uh, the arrow showing the direction of travel of the blade because you know with these blades you could put them on your saw so they spin either direction if that makes sense so you kind of want them always to be spinning the same way and right here behind each one of these diamonds like this right here they kind of look like little little comets uh, streaking through and what you're seeing is a buildup of metal behind an individual diamond and it kind of acts as a support structure. So if it's turning in the direction of the arrow, that means that diamond is coming into contact and, well, cutting material. And it's supported from behind with a little ramp of steel. And then it, you know, gets tapers away. So that is what this kind of looks like here. This is a top-down view of that exact same portion of the blade. And you can see uh, we do have some missing diamonds here. And, uh, well, you can we also have some exposed diamonds. So now the next step is going to be to go cut a brick and then come back and see if we can have any visual change or difference in this blade. So here is the brick that I'll be cutting. Um, you can see that there's still some mortar on this, but I'll just be cutting on the brick side. And one thing that people have said is it, to cut, cut it a couple of times. Um, you shouldn't have to cut all the way through. I think simply allowing the blade to enter and then I'll back out and I'll do that three times. We'll give it three shots to make a difference, okay? And uh, <laughs> since... Uh, I have to have my blade guard up. I'm definitely gonna get wet. Let's give this a go though. So in theory, that should have fixed the blade and uh, exposed more diamonds. Now it doesn't necessarily feel like it to me, but um, all the proof is in the photos, right? there should be some noticeable difference. Let's head on back up to the microscope. So as a little bit of a reminder of what it looked like, this was before I cut the brick. And here we are after I cut the brick. So not a whole lot of difference. And now if we go to a side-by-side -side view, uh, it's not perfectly lined up, but here at this side-by-side -side view, we can see that before and after, look virtually the same. Very little, if any, difference in the blade. Now, let's head over to the top view. So uh, on the top of the screen here, this was what the cutting edge of the blade looked like before cutting the brick. And here's what it looks like after cutting the brick. So uh, once again, it's hard to get them lined up, but you can kind of see here uh, what we're looking at. And there's once again, no difference. So since that didn't work at all, we will be now trying the obsidian. Uh, this is just a piece of, I don't know, leopard print type obsidian or whatever from Little Glass Butte. And we'll do similar kind of cut in, pull it out, 
do that three times. Uh, that should be good enough to uh, see if it does anything. So it kind of uh, broke out there, but that doesn't matter. Let's go back up to the microscope. And just what I was expecting, uh, here we are after cutting that obsidian and there's no changes to the side of the centered blade. And when we switch to the top down view, which is the important part, this cutting angle here, um, or the cutting edge, there's no change whatsoever. So let's head back into the shop now and kind of really uh, examine these results. So I think it's fair to say that cutting a brick, cutting obsidian will not sharpen a dull lapidary blade. If what you do with your lapidary blades is cut rocks, okay? Now, could this, these methods potentially work for the cutting of tiles? If you are a tile setter, if you lay tile for a living, uh, maybe. Okay, I don't do that. I don't have any blades that have cut 9 million tiles. But if we really examine this, we have obsidian, which has a hardness of about 5, 5.5. I'm not exactly sure what the Mohs hardness is of a brick, but it's soft. The only way you can take a centered or a notched blade and make it sharp again and have more exposed diamonds is to upset the metal, remove a little bit of the metal, exposing more diamond. If you could do that with these things, well, that would mean that the metal holding the diamonds in is softer than these things, at which point you would be chewing through blades incredibly quickly. That only way that I know to expose more diamond on these blades is to take a item harder than it, like a bastard file, peeing around the perimeter, upsetting the metal, exposing new diamond, so that when you take it over to the blade, that upset metal comes off when you start to cut and you're just cutting with diamond again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you disagree with me, um, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, maybe uh, I wasn't cutting these long enough um, I know there's some other things out there that people talk about using, uh, silk and carbide, different dressing sticks. There's all kinds of products on the market these days. I just, unless it's harder than the blade, it's not going to work. End of story. Um, you know, that. That's what it comes down to. Hey, um, I appreciate you coming by the channel, hanging out with me. You know, we get to test stuff here, try to... Uh, Leave the opinion at home and, and keep it purely based upon what we can observe. All right, everybody, take care. Thank you so much for watching my entire video. If you like the videos, well, you'll probably also like the website, currentlyrockhounding.com. There's all kinds of great listings and articles, and it's growing all the time, uh, along with different photos. Just all, go check it out. Go check out the website. It's free. There's no ads. It's just there for your enjoyment. So uh, as always, thank you so much for coming by the channel, hanging out with me, watching. <laughs> Take care, everybody.